Hi, Ian here from Dark Blaze Workshop. Welcome back to another video. In this one we're doing the third part of the Credence Barebone tutorial. Okay, this is my pigment pot. Um, what I do is I generally put pigments in here and then I can chop and change the colours just like mixing colours um, <clears throat> when I'm painting. Um, so I've got this, uh, I think it's red ochre, but it's, it's a bit too red. Um, I'll show you now. I'm just using a, a GW uh, dry brush for this. But I wanted to, I saw little flashes of red here and there in the um, the box art. So let me put that there and we can see what we're doing then. Right. So red ochre. I'll get rid of some of it on a paper towel. Um where should we go? Up there. It is very, very red, very intense. So what I'm gonna do I think this is Van Dyke Brown, it's one of the darker browns you can get. I'm going to blend the edge of it. It does have a nice little bit of variation there. Um, so I mix, I mix up some colours. This red ochre because it looks really potent. I've got some earthy tones as you can see. Dusty colours. I'm just going to put little flashes of pigment here and there. Because sometimes it's, it's, I find this better than doing washes. Because I'm rubbish at washes. Go the dark brown again. Let's try adding it to different areas, different areas of shadow, just to change the tone. That's the red and brown mix again. I wish they did a purple. Um, I'll carry on for this for a bit and I'll uh, I'll do a bit of thinking. See if I can come up with a purple. Well, hopefully you can see it's changing the tone in different areas just to break things up a bit. I'll try a lighter one. Um, I think this is one by Vallejo Green Earth. And I'll just dust it here and there. Quite like that one. So carrying on with the pigments, I've, um, every now and again I'll clean out my box and I'll put the, I'll separate the pigments again. So just to go through them again, um, uh, that one is raw umber, burnt sienna. And that's uh, Carbon Black, I think it's by Vallejo. And that one is Green Earth by Vallejo. 
these two are Pro Pigments by Model Display Products. They're pretty good, actually. And that's Van Dyke Brown by the same company. Uh, this one's Light Slate Grey. That's a Red Ochre by MDP. And Burnt Umber by MB and MDP. Model Display Products. All right. Um, on my travels, I went to an art shop and I got a load of pastels. And you never guess what? He had a purple. So the plan is to make a pigment. Now, what I need to do is to find something to scrape it off with. So I'm just going to grab a scalpel and we'll scrape it off into the pot. So we've got a pile of purple to use. I think this will add to it quite nicely. So that's basically all that pigments are, is just uh, grand and pastel colours. Um, so, pick up Credence and we'll add some purple. Same again, I'm still using the same uh, dry brush from GW. Uh, I'll just put, put little patches in here and there. Again, just to change the tone. this if it does get too strong a tone you can always um, go over the top of it with a darker brown just mix those two together and just blend off the edge a little bit I'm not sure if the camera is going to pick all this up but uh, in, in a hand it's uh, that looks really nice having all the different tones in there. <laughs> blow off the excess. Okay. Let's keep going until you're happy. Tend to push the darker colours up into the shadows just in case they've gotten rid of it with the, the dry brushing. And it's just to reinforce what we've already done. Um, I'm going to use the light grey on the wood. Uh, use the side of the brush there. Can have hours of fun with this. <laughs> so I'm going to carry on. I keep playing till my heart's content, and we'll come back for the next stage. So moving on to some of the bits for the base, um, I've got these bits from an MDF terrain kit. Uh, I thought they might look pretty cool. Um, if I just cut bit off, it'll be a bit of brass that's stuck in the clouds somewhere. This part is the 
the uh, I don't know what they call them really. That's uh, to protect your brushes. So I'll just cut one of those off. Um, come like that. Every brush you buy, you know, bring, get one of them in it. So I just painted that brown, and I've got a strip of balsa wood. Uh, I've done a couple already, but what I do with these is get a tool and just score them. Give them an extra bit of texture. And this was a wheel in a, I think it was a GW kit, I can't remember which one it was, but I thought it looked pretty cool, so I'm going to do that in some rusty colours as well. So we'll start off with the, the balsa wood, I think. Right, so the plan is, use a bit of blue tack to attach them to the base. I've got a couple of strips prepared. And we'll go straight on to the, the base coat in a minute. I'm not going to bother priming them, we'll go straight on to the brown. So that's straight on with the base coat, no great technique here, just slap it on. Let's get a good. Uh, coverage when you put a little bit of water not as much as when I'm doing you know painting on figures all about saving time after all right I'll come back after the first coat's done so it's the first coat on you can see little patches where I've missed so I'm just going to do a second coat to cover a all those bits. So it doesn't look as patchy. So a nice even coverage is what we're after. Make sure you're getting all the other bits as well. It's not looking too bad from this side. So the next stage is a quick wash with Agrax. Try and get it into all the grooves and at the ends. Again this might take a couple of coats. see how it dries. So first stage on the rusty wheel is a coat of wall block bronze. Uh, I'm not going to bother watering it down, it's straight out of the pot. Again, uh, nice even coverage. Make sure you get everything covered. So to do the rust for this I've lined up a few colours, uh, Mournfang Brown, Scrag Brown, Troll Slayer Orange, Fire Dragon Bright. And because I've put the, the warp block bronze on there it's a little bit glossy so I need to matte it down with the first colour, uh, Mournfang Brown. And I'm using this brush that I got from I think it was Hobbycraft or The Range or something. and. Uh, it's for that hobby, was it a decoupage or something like that it's called? Anyway, it's a really stiff uh, stiff brush. So I'm going to mat down by stippling on the Mournfang Brown. So I'm dipping it in the paint and then I'm rubbing it on paper towel. 
You see it's taken the shine off it now. Sure it's glued down and I'm only going to be doing the top, top side of it, or the top and then one of the sides because the, the bottom side is obviously going to be attached to the base and I need better blue tack. <laughs> so straight in with the second colour which is scrag brown. See, that's a nice rust colour building up now. I'll concentrate it towards the middle of these, there's like three sections there, so I'll concentrate it towards the middle of each one and then towards the centre of the side. If you need to, give it a blast with a hairdryer before you move on to the orange then. So the first orange was Troll Slayer. That's starting to give a nice effect now. Uh, the last one is Fire Dragon Bright. I haven't even bothered cleaning off my brush in between, I've just gone straight into the next colour. You can see how this brush is giving the nice pattern to the rust. Let me zoom in then. Okay, there's a better view of everything. Quite a nice effect. So I'm going in with a second coat of Agrax, just to dull it down a bit more. So I think the, the paint was still wet when I put the first one on. And it all just sort of blended into nothing really. So that's a bit better the second time around. Right here, it's quite a thick coat. Let's make sure we get it into all the grooves. And leave it dry. That's a bit soggy, so <laughs> it's not going to stick. There we are. Okay, so I've been doing the, the wood grain same process as we did on the actual model and uh, I've gone up to um, Japanese uniform but then added a little bit of bone to it or buff and now I'm doing the armour brown just to try and separate things out a bit more. So it's always good to go back in with a dark colour again to redefine the grain. I'm not going to spend too much time on it because these are just bits that are stuck to the model anyway. So you, chances are you're not really going to see them. So I'll leave that at that. And for this bit I just... Um, cut a little bit out with a craft knife just to make it more interesting but I'll just finish it off on the armour brown So onto the base then, as you can see I've already started putting some uh, slate pieces on there but um, I need to put the, the rusty wheel back on because it fell off but anyway I'm going to do 
more rubble around the back here and these slate pieces for that or any kind of basin material you've got really or, or sand or anything like that so using water down PVA let's apply it to the base and then just drop it on with your fingers and I'll leave it settle there on its own now. So I'll just wait for that to dry and need to reapply the, the rusty wheel but I think I'll, I'll use PVA this time just to make sure it stays in place. So we can put that on the wheel here. Just fix that into position and we'll leave to dry. So the ballast stuff is dry so I'm going to dry brush it with a mix of uh, dark blue grey and a light grey. Just trying to find every patch <laughs> that I've done and I think the other one was heavy blue grey but any light grey will do just to lighten it up a bit and just concentrate towards the middle of each patch And lighter again. Okay. So next up, I've got some PVA. Add some water to it, not that much, <laughs> and give it a mix. So I'm going to add some uh, newspapers now, but I want them to be dirty, so I'm going to add some Agrax into the mix. A nice dirty glue. And so I've cut these out. Um, I printed off uh, a few newspapers that I found online, shrunk them down, printed them off. So I'll dip them in the PVA. And paper towel handy. It's just a Make it a bit more interesting on the base. So it's had a good soak. I'm going to fold it over, scrunch it up. I'll dip it back in the glue and apply it to the base. I'll put it on the side here to cover the rest of the gap in the base. And the second one. Make sure I get it the right way up. I'll go at the front. I 
got room for some more. I see I might cut that one in half. Any bits of paper will do, cuttings from a magazine or something like that, as long as you cut it to the size, you're not going to really see much of it if you cover it in agrax and put it somewhere that you're not actually looking at, you know, at the back of the base. Or, um, so we'll put that one. And for one of these newspapers, I'm going to attach it to one of the, the logs, if I can find it, <laughs> you know. It's just one of the, the extra bits of wood that we painted earlier. I'm just going to attach it to one of them. It's just to make things a little more interesting, that's all. So, um, the next stage is to attach the wood to the, the miniature itself. Okay, so I'm going to attach the rest of the pieces of wood. Um, and luckily, I've found that there's a hole up the top where I can just attach that bit. And there's another hole in there. So <laughs> I wouldn't actually have to glue these um, and if I get fed up with them I can remove them so I'll just leave that one there and then the third one I think I'll put down here somewhere so. yeah okay I'll glue this one Need to find a uh, an angle where it'll sit nicely, but no, happy with that. So for this piece, I'm going to attach it there. So I need a bit of glue there and there at uh, the base of the stick. Just let it rest in position. I can see I've glued that one. Um, don't worry about the glue, it does clear dry. Uh, I'm going to leave that one though. It doesn't need any glue and it's fairly solid in there. So yeah, I think that's it. Uh, I'll just tidy up the bottom of the base and I think we're done. Okay, there we are finished. I uh, really enjoyed this one, even though it's the second time I've done it. It was still very, very enjoyable. I love all the little extra bits that uh, that we've added to it and um, I think it just makes it um, that much better. So, um, any questions, get in touch. As always, I'll, I'll try and get back to you as soon as I can. Um, this this um, version will be going up as a giveaway in the future on the Patreon channel. I'm just hoping that the numbers will pick up. Um, once once we get to about five or six, I'll uh, I'll announce it then. But um, that's it from me for now. Uh, we'll see you in the next episode. Cheers. <laughs>